Welcome everyone, I'm Jessie and I'm sure you're all aware that Tumblr has many facets. There are several areas such as fandoms, memes, history, art, etc. that all exist in one site. It has many sides, if you will. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Today we're going to be looking at the science side of Tumblr, where you can find explanations for both cool things and for things you probably wish you had never heard about. And as we all know, the science side is never wrong. So let's dive in and see what the science side has in store for us. Our first post comes from Bees My God. What does the fox say? That's a really long fox. Um, if you'll notice, the fox part on the left has front legs and the fox part on the right has hind legs. That's eight legs. Obviously, this is a spider, not a fox. Follow for more science facts. Thanks, Science Side. Like I said, Science Side is never wrong. That is definitely a spider. Great job, Science Side. And on a side note, the photo in this post is from Alex B. Witt on Flickr, and I'll have his original photo linked in the description. Luckily, the person who reposted this photo to Tumblr gave correct credit, complete with links in their caption. Can you lick the science? An abbreviated list. Genetics. Do not. Unless cheek swabs. Chemistry. No, do not. Archaeology. Perhaps, but might be human bone. Geology. Sometimes needed, sometimes dangerous. Wait, dangerous? Why? Hold on, I have to Google something. Oh, right. I forgot dangerous minerals can be found in rocks. And now I need to show you all this thread by geoscientist Mika McKinnon on rock licking on Twitter. Don't worry, you only take a sec and there will be memes, so onward down the rabbit hole. All right, so apparently there was a viral tweet mocking geoscientists for licking rocks, and that's what started this thread because the mocking wasn't fair, and apparently licking rocks is a real strategy because taste and texture are diagnostic. Cool. She goes on to describe how licking rocks can tell you a lot. Apparently, the easiest way to ID between halite and sylvite is salty versus sour, sand versus clay is the cutoff between gritty or not, and apparently fossils stick to your tongue. Okay, didn't know that. That does not sound pleasant. Skipping ahead, she answers questions about different rock licking scenes from movies. That salt licking scene in The Last Jedi? Not ridiculous but actually tactically important to know what rocks encompass you unless you're a fan of dumb ways to die. Because not all rocks are stable. Some little unsteady. The doctor had an excellent tasting technique. Also, because the sand was actually dead people, taste testing was actually very diagnostic because the whole fossils sticking to your tongue thing explains the face. And apparently Jack Sparrow's tasting technique was crap. Way too much tongue, and apparently any rock tough enough to weather into that nice smooth shape isn't one where taste is diagnostic. All you get is the seawater coating. So he licked the rock for nothing. Unless he just wanted to taste the salt, I guess. And Gordon Ramsay apparently licked a quartz spear for really no reason. Also apparently bad licking technique. Now onto rocks you don't want to lick at all because bad stuff. Do not lick anything with mercury, arsenic, or lead. Got it. Don't lick anything that smells like garlic, which I guess includes arsenic. So, none of these rocks. Anything with mercury is a slow, painful way to die. And apparently cinnabar, a mercury sulfide, is the most deadly mineral on Earth. Good to know. Do not lick. Do not even touch. Just turn around. Now, run. And if these vases she posted are indeed made from or more likely coated in this mineral, I have a feeling that artist did not live very long. Chalcanthite. Pretty, but will give you copper poisoning. No licking. Don't lick Galena. You will get all the lead poisoning. All of it. Asbestos. Technically not deadly to lick. But it will splinter into your tongue like fiberglass and you'll huff shards into your lungs for long-term damage. Zero out of ten. Would not recommend licking. Torbernite is radioactive. And a bad idea for licking. And apparently will also give you copper poisoning. Fun! See this rock? Looks like fun, right? Don't lick. It will screw up everything. Your breathing, heartbeat, circulation, nervous system, your skin, just don't. 
Clearly I'm paraphrasing a lot, but if you want to see the whole thread, I'll have it linked in the description. Let's get back to seeing what kinds of science we can and cannot lick. Psychology. Best not. Physics. Uh, how? Zoology. In zoology, science leaks you. My Russian accent sucks. Anthropology. Maybe ask first. Yes, always get consent before licking. Herpetology. Bad plan. Bad plan. Bad plan. <laughs> For any who maybe don't know why this is a bad plan... Sociology. Yes, if you have time and dedication and a willingness to piss a lot of people off. Botany. You might hallucinate or die, or it might be delicious. And I'm sure in rare cases, you might get all three. Computer science. The tingle of electricity on your tongue is how you know it's working. Epidemiology. For the sake of the world, please do not. Yeah, unless you're just looking to contract all the infectious diseases. Linguistics. Despite the name, please probably don't. Engineering. Maybe, but it will probably taste like spreadsheets. Software engineering. Nothing else has made the code work so far, so you might as well try it. Oof, I'm having flashbacks of college. Neuroscience. That is someone's brain. No. Do not. Marine biology. You can try, but you'll probably just get a mouthful of seawater. Astronomy. Look, if your dedication to lick Uranus is what takes to get humankind to another planet, then so be it. After you die, it is believed that you have seven minutes of brain activity left inside you. And in the seven minutes, you experience your entire life over, in a kind of a dream. Because in a dream, time is stretched. So if this is the case, what if right now you're in that seven minutes? How do you know if you're alive or just reliving old memories? This would kind of explain deja vu. Well. Do we continue in the cycle and never actually escape? Because we die at the end, and after dying, we dream the seven minutes again. And just each time the seven minutes are actually shorter, so in reality, we could all be dead in living within the span of an elongated second, and Earth could actually not even exist anymore. What the f***, dude? Well, now my brain hurts and I'm questioning my own existence. So there's that. Thanks. How is it that when you are dead in a zombie, you can rip open a man's ribcage, but when you are alive, you struggle with a bag of chips? Asking the real questions. Ironic thing, it's your brain's fault. Your brain is stopping your body from using its full strength for every task so as to not horribly injure yourself. Example, the human bite has enough power to bite clean through a finger as easily as if it were a carrot stick. Our higher brain tells us, no, don't do that. That's a bad idea. But theoretically, once infected with the zombie virus, the higher functioning of your brain that tells you that doing so will injure you is turned off and the only important need is the need to feed, even at the cost of your own body. Oh. Okay then. Ah uh, yes, the majestic flap flaps. Wait, are those breaching mantas? No, they are majestic flap flaps. Fun fact, manta, majestic flap flap, rays, actually do this to scratch their belly or to help them with a birth. If the females are having trouble with a labor and the pups get stuck, pups, I think that's the correct term, they jump out of the water and the smack upon re-entry pushes them the f*** out. On the other hand, they don't have any hands, so if they get an itch because of some kind of bug or something, the smack helps them scratch it. Majestic flop flops are so cute. Thank you, science. Belly flop to baby drop. How many star in the sky? Like, seven star. Good job, NASA. Keep up the good work. Oh wow. Just, oh wow. That's just amazing. It's just brilliant. It's just, yo, how much dirt you got to throw in the ocean to make a new country? Science side of Tumblr? Like, eight dirt. Science side of Tumblr is back at it again. How do they do it? To prove that ants countered their steps, scientists took a fruit out of a line and attached tiny stilts to their legs. Since they took bigger steps, the ants totally walked right by the food and got confused when they walked the correct number of steps, but there was no food. Here's a picture. Conclusion, scientists are creative and weird. Science. I can't tell what my favorite part is, but it's either scientists wasting budget and time to see if ants count their steps, 
the idea to put ants on stilts. There had to be a guy who made ant stilts and put them on the ants. Confused ants. Or E, all of the above. But wait, there's more! Can mantids wear and see in 3D glasses? Yes! They put little glasses on mantids! Aw, oh, that's adorable. Do honeybees suffer from sleep deprivation? Yes! Here is the bee insomniator. They put magnets on bees and wiggled them to keep them awake. How do scales help snakes move? Well, they put snakes in little shirts to find out. Shrimps on a treadmill. Biology is the greatest. Yes, yes it is. Lasers were once a huge scientific breakthrough. Now we use them to play with cats. Computers were once a huge scientific breakthrough. Now we use them to look at cats. Conclusion? Science was made for cats. Can confirm. Science was made for cats. How else do you explain this meme? Science side of Tumblr. How do I become a jellyfish? Jellyfish have no brains. You're already pretty close. Okay, wow. Dang. Science side of Tumblr over here with the sickest of burns. Someone call the fire department on that one. Oh, it's a little deer. It's so cute. Why is it so small? It's a baby. Thank you, Science Side of Tumblr. A photo of the rare Dabadee Dabba Tiger. This rare species of tiger has the rare pigment Dabadee Dabba Dye derived from a blue world. Scientists have proven that all day and all night, and everything he sees is just blue. Like him, inside and outside. Listen up, here's the story. Um, do you think he knows? Dr. Fisher, get off that man's face. You are a scientist, now act like one. Hey, now, who are we to say that Dr. Fisher doesn't know what he's doing? There's a very good chance that he knows that now is a perfectly good time to lick the science. If a plant is sad, do other plants photosympathize with it? I chlorophyll you, man. Ugh. I present to you the biggest of Uggs. Does the science side of Tumblr actually exist? Science side of Tumblr, what do you think? Protons. Science side sounds quite positive today. There's your proof. If science side says it exists, then it must exist. All right, that's all I've got for you guys today. Before I end this video, I'd like to feature some art. Check out this piece by UK artist Iona. If you'd like to see more of her work, check out the links in the description. Also, if you want a chance for your art to be featured, I am currently accepting submissions via DeviantArt. All my links are down below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching the science side of Tumblr. If you haven't already and you'd like to be, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye!